of his punishment. وَبَعْدَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهَ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, when the believers remember Allah, fear enters their hearts. When they remember Allah, fear enters their hearts. And they have the saying in the English language, they put the fear of God into him. Meaning the fear of God is the highest fear. So when the believers remember Allah, fear enters their hearts. So when someone is doing something wrong, his, his brother will say to him, Ittaqillah, fear Allah. And that should put fear in his heart to stop what he's doing. Ittaqillah, fear Allah. Because when the believers remember Allah, fear enters their hearts. Fear of his punishment. Unfortunately, we have some Muslims who have the opposite always understanding of Allah, that he's Al-Ghafoorul Rahim, he's Al-Ghafoorul Rahim. He will always forgive us. This is like how the Christians, they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, oh, he is the God is all forgiving. He, we are forgiven for all our sins. We just have to love him. And everything is forgiven. This is the God that they find in the New Testament. But you find the God in the Old Testament is all about severity in punishment. Because the Bani Israelis to always commit crimes and Allah always punished them. So, they, so there's the God of the Old Testament which they see as very harsh and very severe and the God of the New Testament which they say is all about love. Islam is the correct understanding, is one of hope and of fear. Not always thinking Allah is Ghafoorul Rahim and He will forgive us for all that we do, it doesn't matter what we do, we just have to give a little bit of money in charity. If you put on the Bengali channels or the Pakistani channels or the other channels. So we'll just give money to the mosque, give money to the mosque and inshallah you'll get Jannah. Just give money to the mosque and inshallah you will get Jannah. As if Jannah is so cheap. As if Jannah is so cheap that just giving a bit of money will enter us into through its gates. Indeed the price of Jannah is very, very expensive. It requires a life of dedication. There is the example of Imam Ahmad, who was one of the greatest scholars of this Ummah. He was on his deathbed, and his son was by his side. And when he was passing away, when he was on his deathbed, his son kept on hearing him say, La ba'd, la ba'd, la ba'd, all the time, not yet, not yet, not yet. And when his father came, came around, and he didn't pass away. Because his son was thinking, why is my dad keep on saying, nah, bad? he doesn't want to die. This person which all the Ummah was following, why is he scared of dying? Why is he keep on saying, not yet, not yet, not yet? And when his fa father came too, he asked him, why are you saying, nah, bad? Nah, bad? he said, because I saw Shaitan come to me. He said, Ya Ahmad, you have escaped me. Because he's going to die upon taqwa. He said, you have escaped me. He said, la ba'd, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, his still, soul is still in his body. He has not yet met, been taken from his body. He said, not yet. Even in the last moments, he was still saying, la ba'd, not yet. I'm, I'm yet to meet my Lord. So Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, one of the greatest scholars of this ummah, who was punished, <coughs> imprisoned, in the time of the Khilafa, al Abbasiyah, still he was fearing that he would be taken away by Shaitan. Because the temptation at the last moment by Shaitan is the greatest temptation he can come to you at. Because it's his last chance. And he needs to take you away. So when the believers remember Allah, fear enters their hearts. Wa ba'da bismillah rahman rahim وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخْذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةٌ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ
إن في ذلك لآيات لمن خاف عذاب الآخرة ذلك ذلك يوم مجموع ذلك يوم مجموع لك الناس وذلك يوم يوم مشهود وما نؤخره إلى أجر معدود يوم يأتي لا تكلم نفس إلا بإذنه فمنهم شقي وسعيد فأما الذين شقوا ففي النار لهم فيها زفير وشهيق Such is the seizure of your Lord when he seizes the population of towns while they are doing wrong. Verily, his seizure is painful and severe. Indeed, in that, there is a sure lesson for those who fear the torment of the hereafter. That is a day whereon mankind will be gathered together. And that is a day when all the dwellers of the heavens and the earth will be present. And we delayed only for a term already fixed. On the day when it comes, no person shall speak except by his his Allah's leave. Some among them will be wretched and others blessed. And those who are wretched, they will be in the fire, sighing in a high and low tone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of his destruction of nations that came before us and is reminding us of the day when we will stand for 50,000 years when no one will speak except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of them would have been wretched, have lost, have failed, and others will be happy. And of those that have failed, they will be thrown into the fire screaming in high and low tones. وَبَعْدَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالَّذِينَ يَسِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوسَلَ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوءَ الْحِسَابَ Those who join that which Allah has commanded to be joined. All of the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fear their Lord and dread and they fear their Lord and the worst of outcomes, the Surah Al-Hisab, the dreadful reckoning. So he says, وَالَّذِينَ يَسْلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلُ Those that join that which Allah has ordered them to join. Unfortunately, we live in a world where the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, only join part of that which Allah has enjoined upon them. And they believe that they are pious, religious, fearing people that will enter the heavens. They pray, they fast, they give donations, they pay the zakat, they go to hajj and they believe this is enough. They believe this is enough. Allah has ordered upon his believers that they give their lives to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَشْرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَمْوَالَكُمْ Allah has purchased from the believers their wealth and their lives. Allah has bought our souls from the believers. Not only part of our souls, not only part of our lives, or not only part action. He has purchased our lives in totality. When the Muslims used to come to Rasul والسلام, when they were expelled from Mecca, they used to live in the mountains. One of the Sahabi came to Rasul and said, Ask Allah to help us. And Rasul replied, You are impatient. Because the people that came before us to follow the prophets, they were sawed from their heads down. Their skins were combed off with metal combs. But still they were patient. The price of Iman is very, very expensive. It does not only require a few actions, rather it requires our whole life. Look to the history of Islam and the heroes of Islam, what they gave for this deen. 